exhibit. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to their purpose, like who we're talking to, everybody wants to know, you know, what do I say to a financial advisor? What do I say to a nonprofit? And the, the moral of the story and the, the, the reason for the purpose workshop is to, is to help us understand that there's not a canned script or one way to do this. There is... The, Actually, there's people out here drilling or something. Let me go back inside. I'm in an RV park. And you never know when no. people are building decks and working on shit. So we just want to keep in mind always thinking about what's in it for them, what's in it for them, why, why, what's in it for us, why are we talking to them, what are we trying to accomplish, and then what's in it for them, why would they even care, because as we go through the seven Ps from purpose to payoff, ultimately, the payoff of influence, impact, income, inspiration, like, you know, for Denise, for example, I mean, her influence could be that she's the one that that helps to change the law in Canada. What an impact that is. What if hundreds of millions, billions of dollars flows through her country's nonprofits in the next 50 years because of the impact that she made? Now, it doesn't have to be that big and bold. It could be that she says, you know what, Cammie, I just, I just want to build a team of a thousand people in EXP so that I have enough, you know, uh, revenue flowing through my downline to sustain me for the next 50 years till I die. Like, I don't know, like, but, but whatever your impact, influence, income, inspiration is that, that payoff to have those payoffs, we need to promote, promote what we're doing, not what we do. Everybody knows three or five or 10 realtors, but what we're doing and with the charitable gifting of real estate, this gives us the ability to show up in such a different way than everybody else, if we're promoting what we're doing, but instead of promoting it by ourselves, what if we were promoting it with partners? Not just because it helps us make money or helps our nonprofits, but when we get in the mindset of, huh, how does this help them? How does it help the mortgage companies and the title companies and the CPAs and financial advisors and you know landscapers and plumbers and whoever it is that we're wanting to bring in as a partner. Because if we're partnered with people, then we're promoting together. It's more efficient and effective. It's easier, it's fun, because it's not just about us and how we're making money. We're actually bringing people along for the ride. We're bringing our partners who can make money, making a difference with us, but we're not gonna find partners unless we position ourselves first. In other words, we all know that if we start talking to people about charitable gifting of real estate, maybe doing a cause marketing campaign, maybe you know talking to them about doing some partnering, first thing they're gonna do is creep on us. They're gonna check us out. They're gonna, they're gonna do, go do some research. And right this very minute, we are living this system. Because every one of you, before you came to the class, or at least before you gave a credit card to be part of the launch pad, you checked Cami out, you checked the Real Agents of Change out, whether it was five minutes or five days of research, but there was something in our positioning. There was something that, that led to you believing this was credible enough, this was um, exciting and visionary enough for you to get together and partner with us. So when we're talking about who do you want to talk to and what do you want to say, kind of be looking at the big picture down the road of how can this be part of my overall cause marketing campaign? So for example, one of the impacts that I want to have in the world is that there is a charitable real estate division 
full of charitable real estate specialists that focus on veterans, animals, kids, environment, universities, religion, education, blah, 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 in every area of the United States. Now that I'm meeting people who could bring it to Canada and Portugal and all that, that's another element. But for me, if my impact is that before I'm dead in the ground, charitable gifting of real estate is just a conversation that everybody has. Nobody knew what a short sale was 20 years ago. Everybody knows what that is now. So if that's the impact I want to have, then I need to promote. But instead of promoting what I do, what if I promote what I'm doing? And instead of promoting it by myself, I'm bringing in partners to help promote this because it's not just about me and, and what I get out of, but what my payoff is. I know that my partners benefit too. And right now, you guys are my partners. We're talking about how to bring this to each one of your marketplace. Does it help me and the impact I'm wanting to have? Damn right. We want to have a billion dollars a year flow into the nonprofit world, which, which translates into $50 million in commissions a year. So not only does it help me, but I know it helps you. Like my presence about this, my confidence, my ability to share my inner game with complete abandon because I know how much it benefits you and your nonprofits and your team and the donors that are going to donate property through you, right? I know that's solid. So what we're doing here today is getting your third P, your presence, your inner game, so confident, so rock solid. You don't need to sell anybody anything. The only person that needs to be sold is you. You need to be sold out that you've got the key, you've got the cookie, you've got the thing that everyone you're talking to needs, no matter what it is. Whether it's a financial advisor that wants to build their business and add to assets under management, whether it's a donor who has that property across the country and they want their animals to benefit from it, no matter who you're talking to, you have what they need. So P number two, their their purpose, what's in it for them. So Maria, I want to acknowledge that you're here. I see you, sweet pea. We've been going for about an hour. So I'm just gonna ask you to kind of just listen and take it in and, and, and translate this into you know, what you need. And of course, we'll bring in the conversation. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Rhonda first. So if Rhonda in five years wants to have this nice big team and be able to live in Belize and have the, the, the I know it's not residual, it's revenue share. I'm just gotta get that clear in my language have the, the right revenue share. And if she wants to have in the next six months, at least five nonprofits and five financial advisors that are part of her partnering to help to promote, she needs to be positioned to make sure that when those people start, you know, if you're making phone calls to people you know, or you're doing cold market campaigns on social media or whatever, that positioning needs to be tight before you do all that. But what we're talking about today is what are the first steps we can do? What can we do to talk to our warm market to start getting those four listings in the next six months? The three new agents on your team, speaking engagements, et cetera. So talk to me, Rhonda, about who, who are you wanting to bring this blessing to right now? Who, who do you want to talk to about this? Um, I have... Uh five actually financial advisors that I've done business with or in the past um, that will definitely pick up the phone when I call. So those are the five that I would like to start with. Um, actually, it's uh, estate planners and then a couple of them are financial advisors. But it, to introduce this opportunity to them only opens up, I think, the pool of people that I might have access to faster. So when you think about your center of influence as, as a businesswoman who's been in business for 20, 30 years, whether it's real estate or other things that you've done, how big would you say between Facebook, email, cell phone, your kids, friends, parents, 
clients, other realtors you've worked with, other offices, et cetera, et cetera. How many people would you say know you by first name? I'd say easily a couple thousand. Yeah. So let's 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 keep this really simple and manageable. Let's say 10% of those, let's say 200. There, if, and thank you for being honest, because sometimes people say, well, I know about 50 people. No, you don't. You know hundreds of people, potentially thousands. Right. And so let's consider how we want to share this with the world, because I appreciate that you said you have five financial advisors, and they definitely need to be on that list. But what I want to, um, what, what I want to express is, Let's not hang our hat or our business or our future or the success of what we're doing in our marketplace on one or two or three or five people. Let's consider what would it look like to actually have an invitation, a, a suggestion, a, a, an opportunity for a couple hundred people that you know to actually sit in on this and know that this is an opportunity for them. Are you, Rhonda, wanting to hold a, a a presentation for your group or are you wanting to invite people to the one that we do every Wednesday for everyone? Um, I would do one of my own after being on several of yours, of course. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and you, now I'm not talking about you, you doing it yourself. I'm talking about me, me presenting for you. Right. So oh. that you're not, you're not, I'm not saddling you guys with going out and presenting this. Not at all. I'm saying I can do the presentation for you. Okay. So having said that, there's five financial advisors. We definitely want to invite them. We're going to talk about what to say to people in a minute. This is more about who are we going to talk to? Because if we're wanting to bring in those, those four legacy listings and the three new agents and all that, we need to spread the word to as many people as possible. So are you open to getting a presentation scheduled over the next couple of weeks? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, so let's assume that you've got this and, and it's, it's the legacy listing charitable real estate 101. We're keeping it really simple. We had called it the overview and all that, but it is what it is. It's charitable real estate 101. It is a way for them to learn. It is the exact same presentation that I do on Wednesday at noon. If I know that there's more nonprofits versus more realtors versus more financial advisors, we can shift the language a little bit to speak to those people. But overall, what we're doing is we're, we're, we are letting people know that this is an option. It's an opportunity. It's been around for 100 years. We didn't invent it. We're just bringing it to their awareness and we're bringing them a system in a way that it helps any and all the nonprofits they love, et cetera. So five financial advisors, who else would you put on a list of people that need to learn about this? This is for everybody. Get your pen and paper out and really be thinking about it and write down some names of people that you can bless with this information. Who are the people that deserve to know about this? Because guys, we can do it one person at a time or we can bring 10 on or we can bring 50 on and we can have it explode in your marketplace we can position you as the expert in the next 30 days, or we can take the next three years. It is totally up to you. So who else would you want to speak to, Rhonda, about charitable real estate? Um, you know, I think I could, candidly, I think I could get three to five nonprofits on that presentation as well. Good for you. And how long have you been in real estate? I'm going into my 10th year. So fair to say you have 500 past clients. Can you think of 50 of those people that, that were fun to work with, that were, you knew that he was a, a veteran. They always had the flag in the front yard. Maybe they had four or five animals in the house and they're always volunteering and doing GoFundMe accounts on Facebook. In other words, people that know you as a professional, they know that you're in real estate. These are people, guys, that we all should be talking to every quarter anyway, like, right? 
any real estate coach or any sales coach would tell us, you know, 10% of your center of influence would give you business every year if you were talking to them. But we're just, we're not talking to them because who wants to pick up the phone and, hey, John, you bought a house for me three years ago. Just curious, who do you know that's looking to move into the area? Like, we don't want to have that call. He doesn't want to take that call. But when we have something fun and engaging and exciting and value add that helps the whole community and, and that we're not selling or asking them for anything other than, do you want to learn more? Mm -hmm. Then that's a fun, engaging conversation that can and does and will lead to all kinds of business outside of charitable gifting of real estate. You have people like that, Rhonda? I do. I do. Sorry, my wheels are turning. <laughs> of course. And I want your wheels to turn. Everybody's wheels can be turning and, and writing down names. Don't worry about what you're going to say to them. We're going to talk about that next. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go into the Legacy Launch Pad and I'm going to share the screen and just go over a memory jogger. This is the memory jogger list that has been started. So you, Part of this you've seen, and um, oh shit, hold on a second. Let me get back on record. Oh, I am on record. Okay. So the the top ten you've you've seen on the master class, but there's but I'm going to get into some more nuances about the partners and specific campaigns. So. I say top 10 just to give it a number. So in other words, the top 10 most altruistic donors. In other words, we all know people who own real estate, who, you know, their heart is around breast cancer. Their mother died of breast cancer. They're always doing the breast cancer races and runs, et cetera, et cetera, versus people that we know that own property that are you know, investors and numbers focused and just wanting to, you know, get to the bottom line and return on investment. So top 10, it, it could be that, you know, three, it could be you know, that, you know, 300, you know, top 10 volunteers. We all know people that are always volunteering. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, there's a charity event. I'm going to go down and help, help sell raffle tickets. You know, oh, you know, the, the, the animal shelter, I'm going to go down and clean out cages this weekend, or lots of people with uh, Earth Day, right, in April. What are, you, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, there's 15 of us that are going down to the beach. We're going to clean the beach for Earth Day. Friends, all of these people need to know what we're doing. I'm not suggesting that they are going to donate real estate. I'm not suggesting that we're asking them to Ask somebody to, we are educating, we're informing, we're letting people know. We are leveraging this as part of our marketing, not only to find donations of real estate, but to have human interaction with people that can hire us to do real estate or that could put us in front of big, big fish and whales. So, you know, look, everybody on here is EXP. Top 10 realtors, be thinking, do you want to recruit a team that's local in your marketplace because you're one of those people who wants to actually have a physical office and you want people to come and maybe once a week you're doing office meetings and you're getting together and having social activity? Or are you more of the recruiter who wants to not really create any competition in your own marketplace, but you want to recruit people from outside your marketplace and do more like Zoom stuff. Who are the realtors that you'd like to have on your team, whether it's people that do three to 10 million in your marketplace or outside of your marketplace? You know, what if you are wanting to, maybe you live in the North and you'd love to spend more time in Florida. And if you had an EXP team growing here and you had 10 or 15 or 20 or 500 people, when you fly down, you could do trainings and have it be a write-off. In other words, really thinking this through, who are these people that deserve to know about this? And thinking about how does it benefit them? You know, for the realtors, not only do they earn a full commission for the donations, not only can they get referral fees, but the, when they are realtors that come on your team, 
they'll be coming to these calls too. And they are going to be learning how to go out and talk to people this way, which helps to build your team. So in essence, I'm kind of your team leader. And as you're out talking to people and they come here to learn about this, I'm helping you to build your rev share, to build your downline, because let's face it, it's very rare that people are outgoing enough to go out and recruit 10 other agents just because they got credibility and just because. The majority of people that come on your team are going to struggle and have a hard time and be verbally vomiting commission breath all over people about EXP when we can give them something more altruistic and value add to talk about, that's gonna benefit you. So feel free to go look at this yourself on your own time and really challenge yourself to go through each and every one of them and come up with three names or 10 names, however many you're wanting, like animal lovers. Doesn't everyone here know someone who loves animals? That person that loves animals has a nonprofit that they're good friends that they could put you in front of, knows a veterinarian that they could introduce you to, and that veterinarian sits on a board of a big decision-making nonprofit. In other words, just know that the whole point of this is we're talking about warm market right now. And in other trainings, we can get into cold market. Hey, Cammy, how can I, how can I bring this to 500 financial advisors? That's great. And we can talk about that, but let's, let's bring the blessing to our warm market first. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we want our own church and our own client? Why wouldn't we want our clients to know that we care so much about them, that we are always going to class and learning new things. And not only, you know, do you know about luxury real estate and senior care real estate? Now, you know about this. Like this, guys, this elevates us in the eyes of our past clients and current clients. Our clients, the people that Sam's working with that have a $500,000 or $700,000 listing, they go to the to the country club. They have friends that they ride and do a poker run to raise money for veterans on the weekend. So I, I challenge every one of you to take a pen and paper and write down a hundred names because we all know a hundred names. And ultimately we're not gonna be calling people to sell them anything. We're not calling people to even ask them to do anything other than learn more. So let me focus on the real estate focused business people and contacts. Every one of us know one or three or five or 10 mortgage people. And those people are constantly wanting to take you to lunch. They're always wanting you to, to, to bring your deals to them. And when you think about it, I, I've had real estate agents ask me this question. It blows my mind. Kimmy, why would a mortgage company want to know about charitable real estate? you know, when you list a, a piece of property, they don't need a mortgage for that kind of a thing. Let's think outside the box, in the big picture. Who do mortgage companies want to get in front of? More realtors. And more of the general public that need, need refi and all that stuff. But even just the realtors, if the mortgage company wants to get in front of more realtors, what if you, as a real estate agent, brought them a way that they could have a lunch and learn? They could do a Zoom where they, as a mortgage company, are inviting 100 realtors to come learn how they can be charitable real estate specialists. And ultimately, friends, this is why this is so beautiful for EXP and recruiting. When you and that mortgage company partner up and you hold a, a webinar, whether it's face-to-face -face or in a, a Zoom, they're building their relationships with the realtors and so are you. Stagers, appraisers. What about the water system? Like up in New England, lots of radon in the water, in the air. 
the water um, quality companies, like they all want, they, so on one hand, all these people want to get in front of more realtors. On the other hand, 87% of consumers, customers, and clients, when they've been polled, and you can go Google, 87%, it might pull up a lot of things now, but over the years, cause marketing, 87%, Corporate social responsibility, CRS, social responsibility, marketing with a cause. 87% of consumers, when given the opportunity, will choose the attorney, the mortgage company, the appraiser, the water system, the handyman, the realtor that is known to be socially responsible, that's doing good things in the world. So I'm spending this time on this because I want us to really think this through. We are blessing these businesses and companies with the ability to show up in their marketplace as socially responsible, not just for the veterans or just for the animals or just for the environment, which any one of them are wonderful. And you've done a, 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 a great job. Each one of you have done fundraisers and sold raffle tickets and given a raffle item for all these different nonprofits. What we're saying to all these companies is you don't have to pick just one. You don't have to give $50,000 to one nonprofit and be done for the year. You can be a part of this movement so that the whole marketplace sees you, you, Mr. Handyman, as helping any and all nonprofits in the area. We can talk a little bit more about that if we need to. But there's a ton of people in real estate, friends, elder care. When Deborah mentioned that she has all of these adult communities, we all do. And as a charitable real estate specialist, just like, you know, you got your real estate license, you can help any and all buyers and sellers. You can, but the majority of people have their, their niche. Like, for example, for me, when I was a real estate agent, I loved working with expireds. I didn't even want a listing unless it had already expired. And preferably if they were a business owner, because I want to meet with people during the day. I don't want to have to wait till they get off work at night and on the weekend. And the expireds were my thing because they had already done all the market research. They already tried it at the wrong price. Somebody else had already spent $2,000 on marketing to try to get too much money for it, et cetera. Somebody else already measured the rooms. Somebody else had already pulled the tax card. I'd come in, clone the listing over, give it a new description and new photos, and bam, it would sell in a couple of weeks, and I was the hero. So that was my, my thing, right? But as a real estate agent, I could work with anyone. As a charitable real estate specialist, you can work with anyone, but I'm going to encourage you to pick a lane just because when we can focus in, it's just like you know, the sun is big and beautiful and it warms the whole planet. But when we have a magnifying glass, we can catch a leaf on fire. In other words, we can get much more focused. So for example, elder care focused, those adult communities, specifically even the senior citizen communities, my God, those are the people that have property. Those are the people that are looking to simplify their estate, those are the people that are looking at legacy and what can they do for their communities. And we could potentially put together a whole cause marketing campaign in your marketplace that brings together all the people who serve the seniors. Because if you think about it, the hearing aids, the glasses, the dentures, the assisted living, senior centers, walkers and canes, funeral parlors, all those businesses make money from the senior citizens, yes or no? Yeah. So, and they've already got your client. They've already got people that are 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. They've already got hundreds or thousands of them in their database. So, you know, even to go on into further into the, to the animal care or into the elder care, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Friends of, uh, friends of hospice, people who do hospice, like all those nonprofits that help the elder could be, a, could be a part of a campaign like that. 
for example, if you go to parkinsons.org, please don't, don't go off on a rat down a rabbit hole right now, but parkinsons.org last year, we met with them and on their website is something about how they accept gifts of real estate. They talk about realty gift fund, et cetera, et cetera. But I guarantee you the Parkinson's group in your community doesn't know about it. Or the Alzheimer's or any of those. So just gonna give you some ideas and then we're gonna open up for a discussion around this. Because also, this is a suggestion that I give brand new people. Realty Gift Fund, when you go to their website and you see that list of people who've received grants from Realty Gift Fund, including the nice image that we have in the presentations with Habitat for Humanity and the Boys and Girls Club and ALS and all these, all those have received a donation of real estate but they do not talk to each other. So even though Habitat for Humanity in New Mexico got a check, the Habitat for Humanity in your marketplace doesn't know a thing about it. But we can leverage showing them, hey, Habitat for Humanity has received a check as the local representative of charitable real estate in our marketplace I want to talk to you, Habitat for Humanity in Cincinnati or Miami or wherever you are, because I can help you do the same. Now, I'm throwing out a bunch of just like a fire hose of ideas, but then we're going to come back and talk about it. Animal focused. If you love animals, what if you were to focus in on talking to, now this is kind of cold marketing a little bit, but there are people that you know, you might know somebody who owns a pet food store. You might know veterinarians, other people who uh, dog walk as a, as a side job, animal acupuncturists, house sitting um, for pets, fence company. Think of all the fence companies that go in and put fences in because people have animals, doggy daycare. So warm market, cold market. Who do you know in your warm market that does these types of things? Children focus. The dojo, karate studios, dance studios, pediatricians, health focused. Who do you know that has a, you know, a natural food store, a vitamin store? Who are the chiropractors and acupuncturists that you know? Because these are all holistic people who typically are also part of the nonprofit world helping and giving back. So as we're talking about the memory jogger and thinking of people that we personally know in our warm market and maybe starting to think about, oh, gosh, I could focus in on veterans or universities, et cetera. I just want to open this up for conversation. Comments, questions, thoughts, any ahas? Um, so funny. I, I think I just took two pages of notes to be honest with you. Um, I, one of my biggest problems is I'm like a bumblebee, you know? Oh, this is great. Zzz, oh, this is great. So for me, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm going to have to kind of lean on you guys a little bit as we grow together to like keep me focused on something because I am literally like, and I try to do a million things at once. And obviously we know where that, that gets us. Um, I think for me, my, my, I would like for my first focus to be with, like I said earlier, um, you know, starting off with that, you know, top layer of a state, um, you know, state and um, financial advisors, because the trickle down from, I mean, they already have, you know, a built in database that they could tap into as well as, you know, as well as myself. Um, I think it's hard to it's hard to, hard to nail down causes though because my for my you know mine are all over the place I don't know just something I thought of. Well, here's the beauty of the financial advisors: each one of them have nonprofits that they love. One's a veteran. One loves his church. One loves you know they've got everybody brings their dog to the office and it's animal love fest going on over there. 
So they'll actually get you in front of their nonprofits. I just, I just want to encourage you, Ronnie. Yeah, we want to talk to financial advisors. 65% of these donations come from a financial advisor. Absolutely. But you know, five of them. But you know, 1,995 other people that maybe aren't financial advisors, but they know a financial advisor and they know a nonprofit and they know people who own property and they know someone who goes down to the country club. In other words, we can have you focus on financial advisors after or from bringing it to your warm market. In other words, invite those five guys and gals, but invite a hundred others to our first uh, charitable real estate 101 presentation. And at that, I can mention to them, by the way, who do you know that is a financial advisor? Because Rhonda can help them to bring this to their clients and people who are philanthropic and need a tax deduction. So the beauty of this, guys, instead of it being, you know, the typical realtor financial advisor relationship, you go to Panera's and you sit down for an hour with one financial advisor and that one financial advisor and you leave after an hour promising to give each other referrals. And now you've got a financial advisor and you feel kind of guilty. You don't really, you don't really know like how to serve three or five or 10 or 50 financial advisors, but now you do because instead of just giving them a referral a year, you're giving them a tool, you're giving them a value add that they can bring to their marketplace and they can, they can add assets under management for their own business. So you're helping them to build their business just by sharing this information with them. Right, right. okay, got it. So let's, so, so I, I'd like to get a, a bit of a, of a poll here. Rhonda's gonna schedule a charitable real estate 101 that she can invite her own people to. And here's the difference guys, you are more than welcome to invite one or two or three people every week to the Wednesday noontime thing. But it's general, it's generic, it's, it's uh, for anyone and everyone, which is fabulous. That's why we do it. In case there's somebody this week that you just wanna expose to the information. But when I do one for Rhonda, we can uh, put you know EXP logo on there or her name, we can brand it to her. And I can speak directly to, you know, thanking Rhonda, pumping up Rhonda to her people. She's going to say something nice about me. And I'm going to say something nice about her. And it's going to get recorded with her contact information. Now she can take that recording and she can share it with those who didn't come or those that she wants to share the recording with. In other words, if you do one of your own, then it's much more personal and branded to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, maybe how, can I ask yeah. you a question? On doing that, how long of a period of time is, is generally, you know, like how far out do you want to invite people to do something like that? So Deborah, what we want to do is we want to schedule it for some time let's say two weeks from now, just so that you can start getting in your mind a, a, a pattern. So great question. Hold on a second. Let me share the screen. I want to show you guys the launch pad process. This is an overview example of what it would look like. So you schedule the legacy listing charitable real estate 101 with me. It's, it's live and online is presented in this case by myself. Over time, as the team grows, for example, Deborah, after I've done one or two of these for you, and now there's some nonprofits in your area that are learning about it, and they want their donors to learn about it, it might be that you start doing these for the donors. Or maybe we get two or three levels down before you start presenting. And guys, if you don't want to present, then don't. 
I just know that the majority of people who get attracted to this want to step up and be seen as the expert. So what I'm saying is I'll present as many as you want, but I'll also teach you how to present it. So notice what it says here, schedule it two weeks out. Let's send three emails. The emails or the social media are very simple. They're in the launch pad. There are some that are generic that you can use. You can personally customize them like Sam is gonna be able to customize the shit out of his. I personally can't put a logo on it. I, I need the help. If you need help, then you can hire Danielle. You can hire somebody from Fiverr. I don't care how you do it. We don't, we can help you as much as you need, or you can do as much as you want yourself. But the point is to send out a couple of emails and a couple of social media is just to kind of prime the pump, start positioning you, let the people around you know, hey, you know what? I'm a certified charitable real estate specialist. I'm super excited about this. Here's what we're doing on Wednesday at four o'clock in the afternoon. But overall, the reasons for sending the emails and the social media is, is, is just to leverage. In other words, you'll put a link. Here's where you can register to sit in on our brief overview. But if you just send out emails and social media and expect people to get excited and show up, you'll be lucky if you get one or two people there. So notice exactly. here where, it's, where it says personally contact, you know, you're gonna to wanna to reach out to people. And not only that, this isn't just about getting people to come to the event. This is about having human interaction that can lead to more business for you. This is the lead generation from the perspective of when you call those 50 past clients, you will get listings and buyer leads and somebody's going to invite you to speak on their podcast and someone's going to say, oh my God, I had no idea this was possible. Can you come speak to our nonprofit? And if you're not ready to speak and you want me to do it, I can do that. But my point is, is that the process is to schedule it, send a couple of emails and social media, and then personally invite people. Now, to be more specific to your question, Deborah. I'd rather see you inviting people 48 hours before the meeting than two weeks before the meeting. In other words, people think, oh, you know, people have to plan and they got kids and what if they're working? Don't, if, 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 if you're calling a nonprofit that is always talking about how their fundraisers are getting canceled. And if they don't bring in $200,000 in the next three months, they're gonna close their door. And if your church is always, you know, screaming the blues about, you know, the, the plate getting passed around. Matter of fact, we're not even having church in person anymore and people aren't doing their donate. Look, when we call those people and invite them to sit in on this, we, just like you've already done, Deborah, with Pastor Corey, you had some urgency and enthusiasm. Pastor Corey, I see you sitting on a roof in three degree weather. We've got a solution for you. You need to learn about this. So in other words, to call them within two days before the event really is the best way to know that they're not gonna forget, that they know that there's urgency, that they'll rearrange their schedule and show up. Does that help? It does. And I'm, I'm really seeing, too, that this is really a, a, a twofold process that you need. You know, it's great to have the partners. You can have 100 partners. But if you don't have any donor property, then, you know, so it, it's a it's a twofold. Correct. Yes. So. All these things that we're doing are what lead to the donors, but they also lead to other business. So right. in, in the book that, that I've written that we are reworking and Daniel's doing the design on now, et cetera, <clears throat> I give an example of a cause marketing campaign in the, back, in, the, in the back of the book. And I mention these charitable real estate 101 presentations and how you, the person who's hosting it 
can invite all these people you know, but then I also back up and I say, what if, what if, and I'll use you, Deborah, as an example. What if Deborah thought to herself, well, I can invite all the people that I know personally to this and see who shows up. But what if I actually had an event before the event where I reached out to mortgage companies, title companies, uh, veteran owned businesses, like whatever your focus is. And I said to them, I said, hey, mortgage company, because I have just become the first charitable real estate specialist in this area, I'm looking for mortgage companies that want to be a part of what we're doing. You as a mortgage company want to get in front of 500, 5,000 realtors. What better way to do that than to actually share with them a way to get paid a full commission on listings and a way for them to show up in their communities as socially responsible. In other words, you could actually do one of these presentations specifically with people who could be partners, because if you had a mortgage company and a title company and a specific maybe nonprofit that you love or just these different people that would benefit themselves, then we could hold a charitable real estate 101 presentation that it's not just you inviting to, now the mortgage company sees the vision and they're putting the word out. And maybe the local, like, like all the businesses in our marketplaces that are socially responsible, think about Boeing or uh, you know, Chrysler or like any of the big businesses in your marketplace that are socially responsible, they're always doing the car dealership in the area that's always doing something for animals. Mm -hmm. uh, up in Boston, there was a car dealership, a Chrysler dealership that every Friday they they had a, an animal that they would do a Facebook Live. You know, this is little Boo and Boo needs to be adopted. This is our pet of the week kind of a thing. So in other words, you could actually have other businesses come together, understand how this works. And now when you do your charitable real estate 101, you're all inviting people to that. Now, I get very, <laughs> like very creative and big and thinking way too fast for a lot of people. So if that's too much for you and that just makes you want to vomit thinking about how overwhelming that would be, then just throw it away. Don't use it right now. But Deborah might want to take something like that on. Now that that sounds really exciting, Cammie, because, um, you know, before COVID even being in an office, you you do mailers, you invite people, you talk to people to get people to come. Even I used to do first time buyer seminars, those types of things, informational real estate seminars. And no matter what, even if you give people pizza, um, you know, you just can't get people to come out. I mean, I did, you know, Oh, crazy things like uh, photos with Santa, um, you just, just anything to get people to come out and the turnout is always very, very low. So I think with a Zoom call, you get more people because it's easier, they don't have to go somewhere. And with this, it, it's just an umbrella of people inviting and not just you, because you, like you said, you invite 20 people and maybe two or three will come. So if you want a full room, and I think for now, I think utilizing the Wednesday at noon call, if all of us had two, three, four people on there, wow, um, because those, those, they're generic, but I think last week's call was really, it was really great. And I, I anticipate three, at least three people on next for tomorrow. Yeah, all of that. And, and now that we are doing something with Pastor Corey, we don't know what that's going to look like. We don't know how comfortable they are. But my God, he's doing a um, uh, Revelations from the Roof or something like that series that he does on Fox TV every night for the full 100 days. So clearly they want to spread the word. They're not afraid. They're not, they're not like, well, if we want to talk to people, they're going to want to do something with this. So you can actually leverage that. We can all leverage that. Guys, I, I don't know what's going to happen with Pastor Corey, but if, if we are able to get on Fox News with him, on Fox Channel there, everybody in the group needs to be sharing and talking about that. It is social proof. It will help any and all of you help people understand what we're doing 
And imagine if that one thing that we're doing with that group in Chicago inspires, you know, each one of you has a nonprofit that steps up and says, well, we have contacts with our local TV station. Can we do something like that here? I'm just kind of letting that all kind of sit in because I know I can I can be a fire hose of information and talk over as you're thinking. So I know Rhonda wants to schedule one. Who else by a show of, of hands wants to schedule your, your own charitable real estate 101 Zoom meeting over the next couple of weeks? I'm actually, um... I'm communicating with one of my mentors about having you come in and talk to our group of at least 300 agents uh, about this. And he's a forward thinker and he's like producer at EXP. So he's got a lot of clout. Um, be a great person to get in front of, to get your message out and to um, get more agents that have the right mind frame for this and are doing doing it for the right reasons so i'm uh i'm actually in the back channel sending them information and I, i'm trying to clear a time for us to do that i love 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 that sam i receive the the invitation to, to potentially speak to those 300 exp people and that will help me in the immediate future. It helps all of us because the more people understand this, the better for everyone in general. However, I wanna do one of these for you, Sam, for your marketplace, because me speaking to other EXP agents isn't necessarily gonna help you in your marketplace, but those 80 nonprofits that you've mentioned and all the ones that you're already helping, see, so let's use Sam for an example. So we've got samsheroes.com, Sam has been giving 20% of his income back to help uh, veterans, military, nurses, et cetera, et cetera, over the last three years. Sam, every one of those people, the buyer, the seller, the nonprofit that benefited, the title company, the mortgage company that was involved, et cetera, et cetera, you know, they might have. I have seen you talking about it at the closing table. In other words, all those people can be on your list of folks to reach out to. Hey, John, you know how you bought that house for me eight months ago? And we gave 20% to Wounded Warriors. Listen, I got something even better. I found a way to get that nonprofit funded by hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. And we are having a, a brief overview, a little Charitable Real Estate 101, as it were, on Thursday at four. And I knew if anybody needed to know about it, it would be you. I love that idea. Actually, I just, I just shared a video for later on, if people wanna look at it. That was my, my 15 minutes of fame on the local news. Mm. So a lot of people actually saw this. And um, of course, I shared on my Facebook, I shared on my YouTube, I shared it all over the place um, repeatedly so that people understand that, you know, I'm not just an agent that is out there to make a buck. I'm out there to make a difference in the community as well as the surrounding communities. So that's, that's what, that's my uh, money I gave back. So I was very blessed and able to be on the news with that. So um, yeah, I'd love to uh, piggyback on what I've done already and share with more of the charities out there. So it's a great idea. Absolutely. I'm in. So let's, let's you and so you and Rhonda, please um, send me a text or Facebook private message, uh, letting me know a day within the next two weeks. And I only say two weeks, we could do it two days from now because the best time to invite people is two days before. But I say two weeks so that we have time to strategize what, 
what email are we sending out? What social media? Some people don't even care about sending an email or social media. They just want to pick up. I did. I did go into some of the stuff for the for the um, pick up email. The phone and invite people. We lost you for a second. And we're going to get into scripting and role playing in a minute. Okay, you were talking. Yeah, you you're in the matrix. And then you got muted, so. You're in the matrix. <laughs> You're in the matrix, uh, Cami. Okay. Okay, we're all. Would you guys like to see about scheduling too? We need something like to share in your market because I have learned that our customers. for the we seem having bad internet Are you guys hearing me? I think you're back. Am I back now? Yeah, about five minutes, probably about five minutes back. Okay. I need to back, back up a little All bit. Right. I'll just say, If you want to have Deborah, can you hear me? I can. I think you're back. Is she back, everyone? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, all right. you're good. All right. Well, in the meantime, we could have used that little doggy, Sam. We, I love that doggy. Pass him over. <laughs> Thank you. She's she's a little addition to our family. She's actually in the corner right now. Oh, nice. She's in the corner, cuddled. So there she is. Yeah, she's uh, 10 weeks old now. So it's like having a baby in the house. <laughs> mm -hmm. But go back about five minutes, Cami. Okay, well, I, I was just talking about the different, the different ways that we can spend this if you're having a specific conversation. So for example, if Denise in Canada wanted to have a meeting like this, she might say to people, you know, in our country, we're not, we're not benefiting our nonprofits through gifts of real estate from a tax perspective yet. However, I have the expert that is moving the movement forward in the United States who wants to come in and share with us how this would work in Canada as well. In other words, uh, Denise, you could spin it as an informational session that helps people there understand why nonprofits should be able to benefit from this and how they can reach out to their congressperson or the significant uh, equivalent in your area. In other words, we could do one of these for you and you could invite people from the United States who need to learn about this, people from your country and your marketplace that, um, that could learn about it. So if any of you or 
because most of you are going to want to have one of these, send me a message with the day that works for you over the next couple of weeks, except Tuesdays, because I'm doing these trainings on pretty much every Tuesday, although it could be in the afternoon or first thing in the morning on a Tuesday uh, to do it. But let me know if you're wanting to do one of these. So let's move into what are we saying? So who do we wanna to talk to, to invite to these things? And what do we wanna to say to invite them? So it is 125, it's right at an hour that we've been back since the last break. What I wanna suggest is that we take a break from now until 1.30, 1.31, go take a potty break, get some more coffee or whatever. And when we come back, we're gonna start talking about scripting, who to talk to, what to say, how to say it, whether we're inviting them to our own presentation, whether we're inviting them to the Wednesday, whether we wanna send them a recorded message, send them to the library of videos, we need to be able to pique their interest without telling them so much that they think that they already know what's up. So let's come back in five minutes. <laughs> 